After seeing what the worst and best bow infantry units in Shogun 2 are, many of you suggest that I rate the firearm infantry units next. And so, here we are. Hi, my name is Mr. Smartonkey and welcome to the top 6 firearm infantry units in Shogun 2. As always the same disclaimer. This list is based mostly on my experiences in legendary difficulty single player campaigns, and thus I would not recommend using this list as a guideline for multiplayer. For this list I judge units on their overall performance. Factors include, but are not limited to, cost, building requirements and campaign limitations. Before we get into the list, let's have a look at the contestants. The firearm infantry unit list consists of 6 units, well technically 7, but I'll explain why I cut one of them later. Only 2 of these units are part of the base game. These are Matchlock Ashigaru and Matchlock Samurai. The other four were added in through DLC. These are Matchlock Warrior Monks, Portuguese Tercos, Heavy Gunners, and Tokitaka's Tanegashima. These units are exclusive to the Iko Iki, Otomo, and Shimazu respectively, with Tokitaka's Tanegashima being available to all clans. One could argue that Fire Rockets belong in this list too, but I'm going to cover them in the Top Siege Units video in the future. Now that you've seen the contestants, let me know your predictions in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys think. One final thing I want to mention specifically for this list is that I will not be using Fire by rank, and I generally don't advise you doing so either. Having it turned on allows everyone in the unit to fire, but at severely decreased reload speeds. You're much better off spreading out your unit as much as possible. This is not to be confused with Neil Fire from Fall of the Samurai, of course. That ability is an absolute must. With all that finally out of the way, let's get started with the list. Starting us off at number 6 are the Matchlock Ashigaru. But before I go into the reasons why it's so far down the list, I want to explain the exclusion of one of the firearm units from this list, which is imported Matchlock Ashigaru. This unit is different enough stat-wise to warrant a place on the list, but due to it not being available in custom battles, and thus being very difficult to test for early, I decided to tie it in together with regular Matchlock Ashigaru. Another thing worth mentioning is that there are a total of 6 different Matchlock Ashigaru variants, most of which are fairly similar, with the exception of the Otomo Matchlock Ashigaru, which has easier recruitment requirements, only needing a powder maker, rather than the gunpowder mastery art that others need. This leads me straight into why I placed this unit lowest on the list, and those are the recruitment requirements. The reason other Ashigaru units are as good as they are is because you can recruit them right from the get-go on turn 1 or soon after. Matchlock Ashigaru can be recruited after you've basically unlocked every other unit in the game already, at which point they are basically worthless, at least compared to the other Matchlock units which have similar and in some cases even easier recruitment requirements. Which brings me back to imported Matchlock Ashigaru. If you're playing as the Otomo, these guys will be a great option to hold you over until you can recruit Portuguese Tercos, but if you're playing as any other clan you're better off waiting for the next unit on the list. And the next unit on this list at number 5 is Matchlock Samurai. This really is a no brainer. Matchlock Samurai are quite a lot better than Matchlock Ashigaru, and the recruitment requirements are almost the same. Where Matchlock Ashigaru require the gunpowder mastery art, Matchlock Samurai require the building that art unlocks, the gunsmith. On a personal note, I still wouldn't recommend using either of these units, which is why you generally don't ever see me using them in campaigns. The recruitment requirements are just too late game and the units aren't good enough to warrant a commitment. And even if they were, by the time I unlock them the campaign is over. If I want to use firearm units I'll stick to the clans with especially good firearm units, which you'll see further up on the list. That said, if you're hellbound on using firearm units in your Date, Chiyosakabe, Hattori, Weisugi, Hojo, Takeda, Mori, Tokugawa, or Oda campaign, then much like Samurai are the best you're gonna get. Unlike much like Ashigaru, they also have access to Rapid Volley, which pumps out a little more damage. They're even slightly better in melee than both Samurai, so they can hold their own even better if they do get caught in melee. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Moving on to a slightly more exciting unit at number 4, Tokitaka's Tanegashima. The last of the firearm units available to all clans, and one of the better hero units available because for once the small number works in its advantage. Due to the fact that fire by rank isn't fantastic, and spreading your firearm units out is the best way to get more damage out of them, having only 40 men is pretty useful, as it means that all 40 of these bad boys are firing at the same time. In the bow infantry units list I made a comparison of one archer with a thousand arrows, versus a thousand archers with one arrow each. Allow me to make a similar comparison now. Would you rather have 40 elite men who fire their guns accurately and reloaded fast, or 67 poorly trained villagers who couldn't tell you from which end the bullet leaves the gun? Spreading the line as long as possible, no matter which unit you use, will always result in the front line having 67 men. Which means that unlike with bow infantry units where every man can fire at any point, 
gun units will always have a maximum of 67 men firing unless you use fire by rank. Now combine these 40 elite gunmen with the fact that guns, except in very rare cases, kill in a single hit and you have yourself a unit that essentially counters other heroes, generals and other small elite units by blowing them to kingdom come in a single volley. That brings us to the top 3, starting with matchlock warrior monks. As you'd expect from the warrior monk tier, this is an elite unit, and elite units usually have special abilities. The matchlock warrior monk is no exception. This is the only unit in the entire game to have access to the increased range ability, which temporarily increases their range by 25, bridging the gap a little bit to bow infantry units. Their range is still lower, and as I said it's only temporary, but it gives them the upper hand on most other matchlock units, and allows them to more comfortably sneak in another volley on charging melee infantry. Without this ability I likely would have placed matchlock warrior monks on the number 4 spot, and placed the Tokitaka's Tanegashima here. Their other stats are reminiscent of other warrior monk units. Their morale is high and they're dreadful in melee. Their recruitment requirements are as expected, a temple and the dreaded gunsmith building, which once again means that it'll be a while before you get to use this unit in campaigns. That said, the Ikuiki's only other alternative is Ikuiki Machloka Shigaru, which has the saddest stats you'll ever see and still needs the gunpowder mastery art to recruit, so they're not even worth considering. On to number 2 where I've placed heavy gunners. Probably the most exciting unit on the list, as it doesn't use the conventional matchlock, despite having the exact same stats as matchlock samurai. Heavy gunners don't just deal damage to the enemy, the blast from these guns is so massive it actually knocks entire units to the ground upon getting hit. This is an ability entirely unique to the heavy gunners, no other unit in the game can perform this, not even the Atomo Dunderbuss cavalry, which is arguably the most devastating unit in the game. Although knocking the enemy to the ground might seem like a gimmicky fun thing, it's actually incredibly useful too as it gives the heavy gunners much more time to line up another shot. Reload times on firearm units are notoriously long, so getting a few extra seconds can be vital in getting a second or maybe even a third volley in before the enemy closes the distance. If you played Shogun 2 when they released the DLC that added this unit, you'd know it was even crazier back then. They actually went through the effort of nerfing the heavy gunners because they were even stronger than they are now, and they're still stupidly strong. Finally I think it's worth mentioning that due to their heavy guns, heavy gunners can do massive damage to buildings as well. They blow up walls in a matter of seconds, and even archery towers don't stand a chance. So while I personally always advise sieging the enemy out, if you're gonna do a siege anyway, bring a couple of these bad boys and you'll have a pretty good time. Finally at number 1 I have placed Portuguese Tercos. Not quite as exciting as the previous entry in the list, but in my opinion even better. Portuguese Tarkos have almost the same exact range stats as Tokitaka's Tanegashima, a hero unit, but with 3 times the men. They undoubtedly have fantastic range stats, but the fun doesn't stop there. They have almost the same exact stats as Katana Samurai, with just 2 less melee defense but 3 more armor in return, which makes Portuguese Tarkos one of the most heavily armored non-hero units in the game. This makes them the perfect frontline unit. Whereas other firearm units will generally have to back off after firing a volley to let specialized melee units do their job, Portuguese Tercos are perfectly content with jumping into melee after the skirmish phase. They do have less men than most non-hero infantry units in the game, but that is usually not the case after they fire a volley or two. They do of course get outranged by bow infantry, but due to their high armor they don't have to worry too much about taking a few volleys. As if all that somehow wasn't enough, Portuguese Tercos are considered samurai tier, which is to say they have the same upkeep cost as other samurai units, which for a unit of this caliber is incredible value. Finally the Portuguese Tercos recruitment requirements are not as severe as some of the other units on this list, and especially as the Atomo these aren't really a problem. All those reasons combined makes them easily the best firearm infantry unit in the game. That's gonna do it for the top 6 firearm infantry units. Let me know what you think of my list and tell me which category you'd like to see covered next. Check out my merchandise store if you like Shogun 2 as much as I do. If you enjoy these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, it really helps a lot. You'll find all the relative links in the description. Thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.